crying over a clean house. You know, I'm the kind of person who, if you look at me in my life, I'm a go-getter. I'm not really a go-getter. It's just that I've removed so many blocks to being afraid to live in life that I live, as you can imagine. And you see, you see how much I create. You see how much I do. If you, if you live my life, it would kill a lot of people. I have an abundant amount of energy, um, just vast amounts of energy. I never tire. I don't like at the end of the day go, oh, I've had a hard day. I don't wake up in the morning and go, I got a lot ahead of me. There's just presence and I do because I love it. And, you know, of course I've had some embodiment to do through. Um, and by the way, all that stuff that I just said is all play to me. Everything that people would call work is not at all that for me. I don't experience work. I don't experience challenges and except for a few things I'm going to talk about. I don't experience challenges in doing and living. I just don't experience them anymore. Not really. I found my groove. I know who I love. I know what I want. That's the process or that's the result of this work. So, but you know, when you really know yourself, you can look at, in this work, as you guys know, you can look at certain things that arise and you'll go, Hmm, why is that there? <laughs> why? If I'm this free in all these other areas, why in that area? Am I really, or, or am I free in that area and I just don't know it? Is everybody else kind of messed up in this area? And I'm just like, do I have it right? And they got it wrong. <laughs> and I'm talking about cleaning. I just did not understand this. This is one of the most unconscious programs that I've ever had. I did not understand it. And it, even though cleaning seems like nothing to do with emotions, it represented hurt and hatred and anger and fear to me. Cleaning a house. But you would think it would not mean that. It would just be about cleaning. But it wasn't. It was a really deeply emotional thing. And I thought at first it was like, well, I mean, yeah, my mom and dad cleaned house because they were nervous all the time, you know? And when they, when, when your mom and dad clean house, they're going to come and clean your room and clean everything, and clean your body if they could jump in the shower with you, you know? Let me get under your arms, babe. I love you. I just want to make sure there's nothing there. <laughs> Hate to see that happen. My boy gets dirty. Um, <laughs> no, they didn't follow me into the shower. But, well, let me just tell you what it is now that I know from a very early age my mom and dad cleaning became a symbol in my consciousness for this is what people do when they hate each other this is what they do this is how they cope with hating each other when they have to live in the same house does that mean all of the cleaning that they did just came from hatred I'm not saying that I'm saying that this is definitely how my mom and dad coped with emotion. And it would just be like, it's like the Stepford wives, but it was Stepford mom and dad, you know, great people, by the way. I mean, when you meet them, but really deep emotional issues, both just cleaning, just cleaning like crazy, uh, in a way that doesn't even look healthy, you know, that kind of cleaning. But you just go along with it anyway. You know what I mean? Like the house is clean, but fucking everybody's anxious all the time. To, to make that happen, everybody has to be really anxious around cleaning. So it was just an emotional issue. As soon as I was born, the whole thing was. And I didn't understand it. You know, why are mom and dad like this? But this is your whole reality. You don't, you don't know that they're like a mom and dad who are lazy, who won't pick up after their sock. I don't even know if that exists when I'm a kid. In my reality... This is what a mom and dad is. <laughs> so I just download that. that. And I download a few things around cleaning. And they are. That basically in a household, if people are cleaning a lot, they fucking hate each other. I just, that's just, to me, that's truth. <laughs> you know, like, that. my program told me that's not just programming. That's just true. Because that's, why else would you do it all the time? Why wouldn't you connect? With each other if you love each other see but if we're constantly cleaning something's going on or constantly not cleaning the flip side that's that's me for a long time just not cleaning 
And that's like a very specific behavior that has just as much unconsciousness on it as always cleaning. And when you come down to it, it's often about getting love and staying safe. It has nothing to do with cleaning. Well, the other thing that the cleaning represented for me was, you know, if you were in, I'm sorry, this is what, this is what I've <laughs> learned from it. I've learned that if people are cleaning, they don't love each other. Like if that's what they're doing together, they're trying to hide from each other. They don't like each other. And it's all for appearances. And appearances are what matters. That's what I learned from, all, from cleaning. Watching my mom and dad clean. Only appearances matter. Emotions don't matter. Humans, like real important human things don't really matter as much as getting the house fucking clean. <laughs> and I say fucking so that you can understand that as a peacemaker kid, I was actually raging at this. I mean, raging at this. This is why I couldn't clean. I thought it was because I was enlightened. Yeah. Because Eckhart, I think, said that or something. Or somebody said that about Eckhart. He doesn't bother cleaning because he doesn't... What would be the point? <laughs> I think all that shit is so ridiculous. If we're going to say that sitting around and doing nothing and being lazy and not cleaning and taking care of anything is enlightenment. First of all, who would want it? And secondly, it's not enlightenment, it's conditioning. Because that's what I keep saying, guys. There's no one single way of how we're going to show up. Because some of us were conditioned uh, in, the, in the negative. In other words, conditioned not to do something. And then some of us are conditioned to do that thing. But it's conditioning either way. It really doesn't matter. So we can't look at somebody who's enlightened would always be clean or would always be dirty. Because you to even say that, you would have to not even take into consideration their actual programming. You'd just be saying some cookie cutter thing about people. If you went deeper, you would find maybe that somebody had an obsession with cleaning their whole life because of anxiety. And when they went deep and woke up from, or woke up to awareness and then did this work, they might find much more balance and they don't feel focused on that at all. And they understood that that came from fear. And their house just might be dirty every now and then. But does that mean that they're not as clear or as enlightened or healed? This doesn't mean that, see... And, and if we judge people from where we sit, what they're doing, trying to understand is this clear behavior, then we miss out. We, we are totally in the dark, is what I'm saying. Because we just don't know how freedom is going to look until it comes. And it might look like, hey, I don't need to clean the house. Or I have a really clean house. But that might not have anything to do with the freedom. It could just be conditioning, is what I'm saying. And until you deal with the unconscious repression conditioning, whatever you're doing <laughs> is coming from trauma. Cleaning or not cleaning. Because we learn all of this from our parents and it's, it, it involves emotional issues even if we're not aware of it. Well, let me fill in a, a few details. Um, through the years, I had conditioning that made me believe that people who people who were really busy go-getters in the world like just busy doing stuff getting stuff done nervously like my parents were also just equally unconscious so if somebody's active in the world in other words like my parents were active in my house doing stuff to make the world better, to make their lives better, to make money, to accomplish stuff, to do anything like that. I just assumed it was ego. Because that's what it was in my parents. Like, it looks really good on the surface, what you're doing. Cleaning the house. And everybody else thinks it makes you look like everything is okay, but everything is not okay. And I know it, and you know it. 
no matter how much you clean, it doesn't make everything okay. And that's how I grew up, though, thinking that people who were cleaning and working hard, like my dad, and taking care of everything, that they're basically lost. Because that's my parents were lost. And from the outside, it looked like they were successful, you know, got a business, a house, cars, children. Yeah, looks good. House is clean. The outside's immaculate. Lawn's always mowed. Nobody's looking at us like anything is happening here. There's no pain here. We've cleaned it all up. We've wiped the walls down. We've cleaned it all up. There's no pain here. There's no trauma. Well, of course there is. That's the trauma. See all the cleanliness? That's it. That's If people would have been trauma-informed in our town, they would have known we weren't doing well at all. Look at how clean their house is. Fuck. They're not doing well. They must hate each other. <laughs> That's how I saw it. That, like if I walk into your house and it's really clean, I'm thinking, yeah, what's wrong? What's going on? You got some fear you don't know how to deal with it or what is it? But see, that's just a bias I have. If you're if you're out in the world being successful and organized and clean, you must be really fucked up. It's not true though, because I'm successful in the world. And there are some things that I'm very organized around and very, and it's not ego. And I know that because I've done the body work, but I mean, it could be. What I'm doing right now could be the same sort of thing that my mom and dad were doing. And I know that too. Because you can flip to the other side. And it's the same thing. Not cleaning. <laughs> We're going to not clean. We're not going to... See, I even being a part of the corporate world, like being an attorney, and here I am going to be successful on the outside like my dad, and I'm thinking, this isn't it. I don't want to become that. I don't want to become successful on the outside with the clean look and the clean resume because my dad wasn't happy. So I just abandoned that, right? The the practice of law, even though from the outside I had it, everything looked good. I just didn't want to become something that my parents became, and I didn't know that. You know how you rebel against your parents, too? In so many ways, I did as an adult. Like, I'm not going to clean my house. Fuck that. Because it represents disconnection. But I didn't know that. And so there was anger there and hurt, you guys. This is what this is about. It's like real anger and hurt that I had for mom and dad and did not know that I was displacing it towards my husband's. So I picked two husbands that clean a lot. Now, <laughs> Chester doesn't clean a lot, but he gets in phases where he does. And if, and frankly, if he's doing well with his mental health, if he has a bunch of things that he does for his routine, cleaning is one of them, and it actually keeps him stable for him. It's like, because when he doesn't do well, he, he's really messy. But when he does well for him, this is how he describes it, he's cleaning more. And you know what? That's his life, and that's, I have no right, and I don't. That's his thing. But I've had to deal with my own shadows around stuff like this. And, you know, through the years, it was a trigger when my husbands would clean a lot. I mean, I like the clean house, but you know how people say a clean house makes you feel good inside? or that It doesn't. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. A clean house doesn't make me feel that way. So you can see how I would experience that. It's like, if the, it does, I don't like a really dirty house either. Especially sloppy food lying around, no. But clutter is normal to me and just feels normal in my adult life because the clean house always felt like you can't be yourself here. Just, there's no way you can be yourself here. That's how I learned. So a, a dirty house or a messy house makes me feel comfortable. So um, when Chester or first Chad, my first husband, would clean, it's offensive it's fucking offensive to the unconscious. You guys just don't understand what I'm saying here. I didn't, would never say this to them. I would never say, would you fucking stop cleaning? It's so fucking offensive. Mm -hmm. God damn it. Do you hate me? You must really hate me because the bathroom is really clean today.
this was all unconscious, guys, I'm telling you. So look, if you're someone who has habits around cleanliness or uncleanliness, this is what I'm talking about. It's much more emotional than we think. Most likely. But we all have a different story. So that's just it. And, and that those were arguments, you know. You're cleaning the house. I don't even know why I'm upset with you. I mean, I can't make it about the cleaning. That looks ridiculously childish. My God, you clean the house and I'm mad at you for that. I can't say that. So it's like there's something going on in the unconscious around it and I can't get to it. And so I start picking fights with them for other reasons that have nothing to do with a clean house. Or that there's it's somewhat to do with it, but it's not about that, you know? Like the dishwasher. I won't mind fighting with my first husband on the dishwasher because he always had to have it a certain way. And that I pick that fight. That's a fight I can pick. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is my ego. But the way I would pick the fight would never to be get never get angry. Just go quiet and, oh, you want me to do it that way? Well, I don't want to do it that way, but I'm not going to argue with you. So I'm just going to do it my way <laughs> and not argue with you and then piss you off every single day because I can't be emotionally honest piss you off you just want the dishwasher done a certain way when I look back at my first husband he had his own stuff it was innocent you know he just wanted the dishwasher done a certain way <laughs> it's so innocent but it represented hatred and fucking terror to me I'm telling you because it represents mom and dad don't love me they don't love themselves and this house is cold Yeah, so quite a few like arguments and misunderstandings around cleaning. And then, you know, so the best way for me to get back at my husband's was when they would want me to clean, I could say no. I loved that because I could never say no to mom and dad or I could never say no to who they were. I didn't feel like it. So, you know, I just loved it, you know? Like I loved it because I was an anger repressor. There was a part of me that just loved the triggers. That's what we do when we're in profession. We're, we're buying into this stuff and, and liking it on some level and picking the fights, you know, on some level. I couldn't articulate it. This is what makes me cry because with my first husband, I couldn't articulate it. And I feel sorry for him or for any human being who's on the receiving end of a bunch of shit. And, but nobody's articulating it to them. It's sad in your own relationship today. Feel that. I'm crying for all of us. Simple articulation of emotions changes everything and frees human beings and we don't know it. We can't do it. Simple articulation of basic emotions. I'm angry. I'm angry at my mom and dad. That's why I'm getting upset at you around cleaning. It has nothing to do with you. I'm fucking pissed at my dad. They never loved me. They never loved each other. They couldn't show it to me enough. All they showed me was a clean house. That's all you're showing me, and I'm angry at you. It has nothing to do with you. <laughs> couldn't be that honest. How many things in your life is there contention around because you can't articulate basic emotions? How much suffering is there? Do you even know that that's why it's there? That it's because of emotional repression? Are you still calling it ego? Because that's how I hid from all this shit. This is all unconscious. This isn't ego that you can question with inquiry. This is deep fear and anger and hurt that was never resolved. until this work <laughs> and so now it's a different game it's like when i see my baby cleaning oh i know he's in pain in pain because i know him and if it would be somebody else who would be cleaning if i was in a relationship i wouldn't say that but i know he's in pain when he cleans because he tells me but he's coping he, he he thinks he's doing well. He'll even say that. I even said that to you. That he thinks when he's doing well, when he's cleaning. But I also know better. 
So I have never, ever, ever, to be honest with you guys, lived in a household, and maybe you never have either, where cleaning was modeled in a healthy way. I have never experienced it. Because I always chose partners, and I'm still with Chester. I'm not going to break up with Chester just because he has some issues around cleaning, and so do I. You know, I just want to talk about it. But I'm with him, and I'm not going anywhere. You know, and so I still have the experience of I've not had a, a household in which cleaning was modeled in a healthy way. Because I can see that my partners, I married my partners. We choose our own suffering. I married my partners to work this issue out of my buried anger and hurt with my parents. Around this, I chose them specifically. Didn't know it, but I did. So, you know, this has got to be worked out. That's my, that was my whole attitude around this relationship is I'm not doing that again. I'm not going to have another relationship casualty because I'm not willing to open up to who I am. And so I stayed and I fought. And I tried to make it not be about the cleaning, but it was. And I tried to make it not about the buried anger, but it was. And I tried to make the cleaning not about the buried anger, but it was. And I had to deal with it. I mean, how do you say to somebody, it angers me when you're doing well. When you look like you're doing well, it pisses me off. Because I know you're not. And it's fake. How do you say that? to somebody who's just trying to cope. And that's their pain, you know? When my partners have been cleaning their house, they are coping with their pain, but I didn't have the consciousness to see it, and I made it about me, because I couldn't cope with mine. They were just trying to survive like everybody else, with the way that they wanted in the dishwasher, whether they want the, the this room clean or this way. They're just surviving, and I know that now. And I know my baby is just doing that every time he goes into those phases where he cleans for a week and then he stops and the house is messy. I know that that was a phase, a swing, you know, and I don't take it personally. I don't, more than anything else, when I see people, I just want to know, you know, are you doing okay? No matter how you're showing up on the outside, we can't see it. On the outside, we're hiding. Like some of us are really clean and some of us are really sloppy and nobody's better than anybody else at all. We all have different coping strategies. But we, you know how we leverage these strategies against each other. And we did that for years, like making a war out of cleaning or not cleaning because it's all emotional. It isn't about cleaning. It's not about cleaning. It's not about money. Whatever the issue is in your life, it's not about that. And you just don't know it yet. It's about the emotions that you've buried. Wherever your suffering is, that's what it's about. It's just hiding from us. It hides in overachievement even. Like, this has been struggle for me to be, to move in the world through the years because of this. Because the other thing is my dad was a successful businessman and so was my mother. So those are the models that I had is that you, you don't connect when you're in a household together and you go out and you be successful and you, you just do well and that's how you cope. So, you know, it was hard for me to come out as a teacher, first as an attorney and as a teacher to want to do well, to succeed in the world because it represented people who aren't doing well. My pa My parents... It represents some, somebody is trying to be successful because they can't cope with their feelings. And I saw it growing up. So that was a big sabotage for me as I had this teaching that I wanted to bring to people in the world. But it was like, if I do that, if I go promote myself, if I, then I'm my dad and I'm doing it because of unprocessed. But that's not true. I was actually in inertia because of the unprocessed. I was not able to promote myself or do business or move in the world because I was taking a position against it because I was angry at mom and dad. And I had just shadowed all that out to everybody who was acting in any way, cleaning, being successful, being whatever. It all represented to me dysfunction. It doesn't anymore, though. I know now that it has nothing to do. The appearances are not what we're looking at here. We have to look at the emotional landscape of every human being to see why they do the things they do, what's driving them. We can't look at the appearances because we'll fool each other every time when these shadows. 
it's it's so easy to be self-righteous in your shadows why do you clean so much are you anxious <laughs> that's a weapon that i've used because i knew that they were anxious and i've used that i use the position of i'm free i don't have to be manic like you to beat people up because there is no such thing as enlightened behavior that's what i've learned if there is, it's different for all of us and it has to do with our conditioning and how we move through that into real transformation. And it doesn't look like one thing in the world. It doesn't look one way. But it has to be right for us, each of us. We have to be living authentically or it's not happening. And what authentic is for each of us is totally unique. We all don't become a cookie cutter version of each other and if we can give each other this space to truly transform, we're going to have such wild diversity and beauty here on earth when we take the emotional stuff out of our diversity and we find out who we really are. That we, We're not diverse because of pain anymore. We're not positioning because of pain anymore. We're actually, our skills, our beauties, our, excuse me, our beauty, our skill, our, our gifts to the world can be brought to the world without the pain. If that means being successful or cleaning a house, that's what that means. Because you're not in pain. You're living your life. You're successful. Great. I hope that you promote yourself every day on your website. If that's a sign of your success and you're living in abundant energy like I am, where you can finally move, I can be successful now. It doesn't have to mean ego. It doesn't have to mean that I'm bearing emotion anymore. I'm not. Therefore, I can move in the world. I can finally look like mom and dad look, but not for the same reasons. Because I want to, because I'm living my life the way that I want to, because I'm clear. If it means cleaning the house, that's what it means. If it means not cleaning the house, that's what it means. But my only job is to see how I'm suffering and contributing suffering to my relationships. That's my only job, and it's so simple that way. And it includes compassion for people who show up differently than I do. Real compassion. To understand that they can't help it. They're doing the best that they can. And my confusion was that I couldn't see that. And I couldn't love them the way that they were. The way that they are. Because I couldn't love myself. Because that's what all that childhood stuff meant. Is that if you don't love each other, you don't love me. I'm unlovable. And that had nothing to do with my parents, ultimately. It has to do with this world. It's not my parents. It's this world. It's a world of separation and suffering. My parents were born into it just like me. They did the best that they could, just like me. Just like you. And when you come to that seeing, when you've really, really accepted yourself, not just the stuff that you like about yourself, not the stuff that gets you love and approval, but you like all of you. You'll like all of you. Well, you will accept and love everybody as they are. But that will include your anger, right? Because I couldn't even get to this place without owning my anger. I had to come clean with what was going on with me around cleaning and other things. It had nothing to do with those things. It was my buried anger and hurt. Things that don't look like anger and hurt are anger and hurt. I hope this helps so that you look at things that don't look like suffering and understand that they are. Even if you're benefiting from those things or your partner is, suffering comes in almost every form you can imagine. And just because someone looks like they're doing well on the outside does not mean that they are. Because we've learned to conform. To be something that we're not. And we don't know who we are yet. And it's when we discover what we are. Really what we are. That all of this goes away. And we don't become whoever we thought we were going to become. The person who's always nice. Or who always cleans. Or who always doesn't. We become who we really are. And that we can only experience. We can't know it in the mind. 
We can only experience it in presence, authenticity. Thank you for listening.